If you would, turn your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I know I just preached out of 1 Corinthians 15 and uh, want to look at another passage of Scripture here this morning. And uh, so many times you, you look at, um, how many of you have a membership someplace? Whether, I hate to use this word, fitness club or... <laughs> You know, uh, I like some of those, uh, um, you know, little pictures and stuff. You know, I'm about fitness, about fitness piece of pizza in my mouth or this donut or something like that. Um, uh, maybe it's to this. This is a horrible, horrible store uh, to men. Arbor Freight. You have a membership there or you pay and then you get... Uh, benefits for being a member. If you have a, a to a fitness club, you have benefits for being there. Maybe uh, someone has uh, the, uh, maybe it's for Boyne or something like that, Blue Green, uh, different uh, resorts that you have benefits to, or maybe it's a camping, uh, campgrounds across the country, and you can pull in and and as a member, you are guaranteed a place or a spot uh, for there. You know, there's so many things in God's Word that we have benefits to because of the membership that we have. One of them, the key, the foundation to our faith is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to look at this for the next couple of weeks and look at the gospel of Jesus Christ. I realize there's, if you look at the word gospel in the, in the dictionary or in the concordance, you will see that there's different meanings to gospel. But I'm talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, I pray that you understand the significance of the gospel in relation to your salvation in Christ. You know, we must, I, I believe this, we must hear a clear presentation of the gospel and receive the Lord Jesus Christ. A person has never woke up in the morning and said, you know what, it just came to me last night, the need for salvation, never hearing the gospel, never reading of the gospel, a person doesn't just wake up and say, I need to get saved. A person wakes up through the conviction of the Holy Spirit saying, you need to get saved. Why? Because it's something that has been presented to you. Now, I fear though that many believe the truth of the gospel. How many believe that it is salvation through faith in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone? How many believe that? Salvation is Christ plus nothing is salvation. It's eternal. But have responded by faith unto salvation. I believe that many fail to realize its significance and relevance in our everyday lives as believers. Well, why are you preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ? Why are you preaching a gospel message given that uh, most everybody, I would hope everybody here is saved, but given that most are saved here, and uh, why would you preach it? Because of the significance. You know, we are a people of the gospel, and as such, we are called to live a God gospel-centered life. If we are saved, we have a responsibility to live the life that Christ has given to us before the world. Now, our comprehension of the gospel and commitment to it should define who we are. You know, you, <coughs> I say Arbor Freight because I, I purchased a one-year membership. They were saying, now here's the benefits. If you uh, buy this, how, how, <laughs> I should ask first, how many is a member of? of Arbor Freight, or you've bought that little thing. This isn't a sales pitch to you, so I'm just saying what they did to me. 
And if you have this, I know some of you in here are, but you won't raise your hand. Okay, I understand. And uh, <coughs> I don't know if you get points. I, I think you get points for it, so I'll just give you my number. Use this number anytime you go in. <laughs> How come you have four different, man, you change your picture. I thought you were a man, and now a woman's using it. Okay, I see here. They said, now listen, anytime that you see a red sticker or the orange, that's all the time, that's your price as a member, but the white is for everybody else. And if we're having a sale, you can go in early and, and take part of that sale, or even afterwards you can use your, uh, your, your number or your card and you have benefits given to you and you'll save a lot of money. I like that, I like saving money. And uh, so uh, you say, what have you done? Well, you got to use, I'm trying to explain to my wife, if you have it, you got to use it. She, she doesn't understand that concept and she's not in here and I'm sure you'll not tell her that. But look at, I could spend $250 and save 20. Isn't that a wonderful deal? Now you, you ladies look at it and say, that's dumb. But you get a Kohl's cash in the mail or a coupon, you get 30% off. I need to drive to the mall and buy a $6 item so I get 30% off. What a savings. My uncle will drive 20 miles to save three cents on gas. I'm thinking, boy, that isn't brilliant. I think you're losing on this. Now, I can talk about those things, but when I talk about the gospel, there's so many benefits First of all, for being saved, but also utilizing it. Salvation. When you look and have a proper understanding and devotion to the gospel, it is imperative for a victorious Christian life. How many of you want to be victorious in your Christian life? How many of you want to be on the winning side or the side that's already won versus struggling all the time? Now, I'm not saying we won't have trials. I'm not saying that we won't struggle. But I want you to consider and understand what our gospel means to us. First of all, you look at the foundational truth. I believe that it is foundational to everything that we have. So in our text this morning, I want you to look at 1 Corinthians 15. And starting in verse 1, it says, Moreover, brethren, Paul is speaking here. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand. That's uh, 1 Corinthians 15, starting in verse 2. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas then of the twelve. Now, looking at this verse, Paul is saying, listen, I'm going to give you what I've already heard. What I received, I want to give to you. What did he receive? He received the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's saying there's some benefits to this. Why is there benefits? Because I want you to see exactly what Jesus Christ did for us. So you look at the foundational truth of this. Now, in a few statements, Paul sums up the gospel. While it is not complicated, we must understand that each of these elements involved to uh, each of these elements, we must understand them to properly receive, respond, and live according to the gospel. If you look at this, you look at the identification here. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died. Now, and Paul emphatically declared, Jesus Christ died. How many of you believe that? We believe God is 100% human and 100% God. How many believe that? The humanity part of Christ had to die. God cannot die. The deity of Christ cannot die. But the humanity part, Paul said, Jesus Christ died. 
the identification here. See, understandably, one must believe that Jesus Christ was and is the very Son of God. He is the Son of not only God, but He's the Son of the living God. See, Jesus Christ is the central figure of all humanity and of all time. You say, who is, the, who is the central figure of the 20th century or the 21st century? God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who was the 19th? Jesus Christ. The 18th and 16th and 15th and 14th? Jesus Christ. He is the central theme of all time. Jesus Christ. So his life upon earth cannot be disputed, not only biblically, but extra-biblical writings. Josephus, you can read much about that time period of the Lord Jesus Christ here on earth. Some say, well, he was a great teacher. He was a wonderful uh, prophet. He was a master, but he was not Christ. No, he was Jesus Christ. So uh, Paul here says that he lived. Both biblical and historical records affirm this. Now, if the gospel is going to have any significance leading to a complete transformation, one must believe that Jesus Christ is God. The identification. So, you must see him as more than a great teacher and prophet as some teach. You must agree and believe by faith that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Listen, I have talked to people. I've talked to preachers of different faith that says, Now listen, I believe in God. But I do not believe that Jesus Christ is the very Son of God. No, no. You have to believe it. It is foundational for us to believe it. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now, if you reject that truth, that Jesus is the Son of God, deity incarnate in the flesh, then you have denied the foundational truth of the gospel and you are not saved and cannot be saved. Now, I say you cannot be saved. If you hold on to that truth that Jesus Christ is not the Son of God, then you cannot have this salvation. You have to believe that He is the Son of God. Now, we believe that here. Emphatically, we believe that. We teach it. You see, the identification of Christ. Now, many passages affirm this. Oh, we've read this passage multiple times in, in 1 John 1, 1 and 2 and verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory is of the only begotten of God, the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, we've talked about this before. When God created... In Genesis 1, time began. Before, uh, before Genesis 1, 1, there was no time. There was eternity. Everything that we do is based upon time. Everything that God does is based upon prophetical time. At the end of the millennial, time will end. Eternity will begin again. What does the Bible say about time, what God says? The Bible says that a year or a day is as a thousand years to God. We are living in time, but Christ was before time. He was in eternity past. He's in eternity future. He's in present. And so we must believe that as John 1.1 1, 1 talks about. <coughs> so you, <coughs> excuse me, you have the identification of Christ. In verse 3 though, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died. Now, once you have accepted the fact that Jesus was the Son of God, is the Son of God, that He came to earth as a man, you are ready to embrace the second truth of the gospel, and that is that Jesus Christ died. Jesus Christ died upon the cross. Jesus Christ died for our sins. 
Now, following a ministry of about three and a half years, Jesus Christ was betrayed by Judas. We know the story. Jesus Christ was betrayed. He was arrested. He was tried. He was contemned, condemned to death by the Roman, uh, upon a Roman cross. Now, Jesus Christ lived a sinless life. He did not break any laws. He did what was right. But he was condemned because of the hatred of sinful mankind. He was condemned and said he's a blasphemer because he said this, Christ never did anything that was wrong. Christ was 100% pure. You see, if Christ ever sinned, if an ill word ever came out of his mouth, if an ill thought ever entered his mind, he would have ceased to be God and he would have been mankind. Even though he was 100% human. The Bible says, well, he got angry. Read the rest. But he sinned not. Do you know that you can have a righteous anger? Let me ask you, how many are angry over abortion? Is it a sin to be angry over abortion? Is it, is it a sin to be angry over some of the events that are taking place in our country and around the world, not just our country, around the world? Hey, we can be angry about those things, but we cannot react in a sinful way. What's my desire for a doctor who, who, who might uh, uh, be involved in, in an abortion? My prayer is the man will get saved. Now, I, I, even, it's even more real now when you see all of the, the little pictures of, of uh, little Adeline and, she, and, and all of the uh, ultrasounds, and then you see her in person. How in the world can someone take a life like that? I watched a short video the other day of, of a doctor who was doing a surgery and, uh, and it showed the baby out on the mother's stomach and the mouth is moving, the eyes are moving. Uh, you could see the eyebrows and, and the mouth is moving. And they're doing surgery and the baby hasn't been born, although it's out, it's still completely uh, inside of its sac there and, 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 and all of the stuff and, and how amazing that is. Listen, I can be angry about that, but Jesus Christ never sinned. But do understand that Jesus Christ was crucified. Now, again, we know the story that he was sold. Uh, he was punished uh, because of supposedly uh, his blasphemy, which was complete lies that were given. Even Judas sold him for 30 pieces of silver. Now, Jesus was crucified on the cross, but do understand, he willingly laid his life down. Nobody put Christ on the cross. He told Peter that. He said, Peter, I, I could call all the angels. I've said this. You've heard me say it over and over again. The power of Christ. He could have said, righteous angels, stand back for a moment. Demons. Remove me. Demons destroy. Why? He's fully God. But he did not. The Bible says he laid his life down willingly. But he was crucified on the cross. The Bible says in, in Luke 23, 33, And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, uh, there they crucified him. And the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. I was reading this and, and, uh, in my office and, and, and I just got emotional. I said, man, here in a few months, and again, I thank you so much to the church. I, I, I hope to see this place, to see where Jesus Christ went to the cross and died for my sins. Jesus Christ was crucified. Listen, once you have accepted this fact that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, he also was crucified. And then you see the substitution here. Now I want you to look at 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died. Read the next three verses, the next three words. For our sins. Folks, never, ever, ever forget the reason that Christ went to the cross. 
for our sins as a substitute for us. Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Once you've accepted that Christ's death upon the cross, you must embrace the reason for his death. Listen, many will agree that Christ died upon the cross, but they refuse to accept the reason for that death. Why? I'm a good person. I'm a good man. I I, I don't do the sins of other people. I'm a good person. No, I'm a wicked, vile, sinful person that needs help. But God, but God. Paul says, listen, he died on the cross for our sins. He lived a life without sin. He was holy God, holy man. He was the eternal God man. He is Jesus in the flesh. God died on the cross, but he did not die because he committed any deeds worthy of death. He died on the cross for our substitute. Why? Because no angel could go to the cross. You read the book of Hebrews. The Bible says that uh, goats and lambs could not take away the sins of mankind. What did they do? It was merely a picture of the coming of Christ. But once for all, Jesus Christ died on the cross. Jesus Christ was the only one that could do it. Why? He substituted for us. What I deserved, he took. You know, he embraced the death of the cross and the righteous judgment of the Father so we could escape death. Listen, I don't know about you, but I thank God for that. I certainly hate to look at it, and we'll look at it again to see the fact of everything that Christ went through. But I'm sure glad that he did. Why? He paid my debt that I could not pay. You see, the righteous died so that the sinful could possess eternal life. Listen, he fully and eternally satisfied our our, our sin, our salvation. How many times did Christ die on the cross? Once. How many times does a person need to be saved? Once. Can't lose your salvation. If you've lost it, you never had it. Jesus Christ, I love, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ looked at the past of those that had died. He looked at the present and he looked to the future. Could you imagine Jesus Christ hanging on the cross and we've looked at this at Easter time and he looks up to his father and says, forgive them for they know not what they do. These are the very ones that put him on the cross. But he says, I'm here to die for you. Two men, one on each side, are railing on the Lord Jesus Christ and they're cursing him and and be railing on him. And finally one says, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. This man didn't do anything. We deserve what we have. God, would you remember me? And he said, listen, I won't only remember you. You're going to be with me today because you're the very reason that I went to the cross. You're the very reason that I'm hanging here. You see, the the crucifixion is real. He willingly laid down his life. He was the substitution for us. We're the ones that should have died, but Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 28, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. 1 Peter 2, 24, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. And then you look at the burial. The Bible says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried. Now Paul affirms that Christ was buried following the sacrificial death upon the cross. Now one must embrace the borrowed tomb as well. Uh, you have a funeral, you have a memorial service, 
But a funeral service, you go to the, uh, to the cemetery and you have a graveside. You have placed that body into a grave. Now, you know, and if you have went to the, uh, you go to your, uh, your township clerk and, and you say, okay, this cemetery is in this township. I want this many lots. Uh, my, my family, I, my boys know, uh, not that uh, I have to be careful what I say to them because I, I went over some of the things that they'll receive when we die and they're like, my one son, uh, he said, um, when you die in dad, I mean, you know, come on. But they know where I will be buried, North Ensley Cemetery. In, uh, in Ensley Township is where I will be buried unless uh, God uh, comes back and I can, I can skip the grave. And, and we have several lots here, my family has. And so those lots are not for, now these are temporary lots. We're going to use them for about a month and then we're going to uh, resume the body, resume the body, and then uh, someone else can have it. How many have a loved one? And, and I'm not trying to be... The, I'm not trying to bring any pain because of the loss of a loved one, but how many have a loved one that's in a grave? They're going to be there until if they're saved, they're going to leave the grave one of these days. But they were placed in the ground for a permanent setting. Christ didn't go to the grave for a permanent setting he went to a borrowed tomb. There was no plans of him staying there. There was no plans of him being there. If we go to Israel, we're not going to the grave of Christ because Christ is not in the grave. But he was buried. He went to a borrowed tomb. This is paramount for us. Had Christ not died, sin would not have been atoned for. Had sin not been atoned for through his death, he would yet be in our, we would yet be in our sins. They removed the lifeless body from uh, the cross and placed him in a borrowed tomb. Now the stone was, was rolled in front. Now, uh, how many of you get the picture? It's just this nice little round stone that they rolled in. You know, one that two people could probably roll. No, this stone weighs tons. It's on a track that, that, that closes the grave and, and, and they can drive steel pins through the stone into the wall. It cannot be moved. It would take a lot of work to do it and you're certainly not going to do it overnight. That's what Christ was put in. He went to the grave. This was a tomb, of, of course, of Joseph. And he says, you know, can, uh, can, can, can we take Christ? And he allowed him to use his grave. The Bible says in Mark 15, And Pilate, Pilate marveled if, if he were already dead and called unto the centurion. He asked him whether he had uh, been any while dead. And when he knew, it, knew of it, the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. And he brought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in linen. Do you realize also Christ was not fully prepared for the complete burial? They were coming back because of the time of his death, knowing they could not do anything during that, uh, that time of, 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 the, of the sacrifice and the atonement. They were going to come back and complete it. He went to a borrowed tomb. He says, hey, can we have, can I have the body? He said, is he dead? The Syrian says, oh, he's dead. He's dead. And they gave him this body of Christ. But listen, yes, he, he is Jesus Christ. Yes, he died. Yes, he went to the grave. But he arose. You see, another element is the resurrection. The Bible says, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day. Now, finally, we come to the last and arguably most vital truth of the gospel, the resurrection. Jesus died upon the cross to atone for our sins. He was buried, but the grave couldn't hold him. After three days, he raised himself from the grave. Think about it. He conquered sin. He conquered death. 
He conquered hell, gaining victory for all who believe in Him. I read this and put it in a file. In a Christian, in a Christian question and answer column, the following letter appeared. Now, I believe that Jesus Christ went to the grave. I believe that He was born of a virgin, that, that He lived a sinless life, that He died, He went to the grave, and He rose again. I believe that doctrinally. But I also, uh, 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 reading this, and you'll understand here in a second, another reason why I, I believe this. Uh, it says, uh, Dr. Euclid, our preacher said on Easter that Jesus just swooned on the cross and that the disciples nursed him back to hell. What do you think? This was the response. Now, please don't believe. I want you to know. I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay, just make sure you know that. Dear reader, beat your preacher with a cat of nine tails with 39 heavy strokes. Nail him to a cross. Hang him, on the, the, uh, uh, hang him out in the blistering sun for six hours. Run a spear through his heart. Embalm him. Put him in an airless tomb for 72 hours and see what happens to him. Jesus Christ went to the grave. Jesus Christ, I, listen, they, to me, they are not a preacher. They may be a, a herald of Satan, but they are not a preacher of the gospel. If they say that Jesus Christ did not die, that he merely was sick and he passed out because of the loss of blood, but they were able to doctor him back to life. No, he died. The humanity of Christ died for our sins. You see, the infidels may teach it. The lost preachers might teach it. But the doctrine of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is of vital importance. In fact, if there is one doctrine, one belief that sets Christianity apart from all religions and belief systems in the world, it is the doctrine of the bodily resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a cardinal doctrine of our Christianity. See, it is impossible to emphasize it enough that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Now, I say all this because this is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we baptize, it's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Had Jesus Christ not died, we would have no atonement for our sin. If Christ was merely uh, doctored back to health and He never died, we're not saved. And if this, Bobby, you say, well, what if, what if, what if it's not true? Then God's not true. Well, what happens if you die and you realize that God wasn't, God wasn't real? I'll tell you. I've lost nothing. I'm enjoying life. But the fact is, is God's word is true. Jesus Christ is real. Had Christ not risen, he would have been like all other men who came before him. The truth of the matter is people are born every day. People can live a good life. People can go to the cross, be beaten and go to the cross and live. People are put in the grave. You take the two men on both sides. Neither one of them rose again, but Jesus Christ did. You see, you cannot embrace the gospel without the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 17, And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. The gospel of Jesus Christ. He died for us. But then you also see the prophetic truth of this. Now twice in these verses, Paul said, according to the scriptures. We must understand that the events involved in the gospel were no accident. You see, before the world began, God already preordained what was going to happen in accordance to Peter. 
when God created the world, and you get to chapter 3 of Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 3, it talks about and gives us the salvation plan. Hey, Jesus Christ is going to come, and here's what He's going to do. Prophetically speaking, everything took place in accordance to the Scriptures. Jesus did not die because the religious leadership among the Jews and the powers to be consented to his death. No, Jesus Christ went to the grave. You know, there's some teachings out there. Be very careful who you listen to. Be very careful. There are some teachers out there that say Jesus Christ hates the Jews because the Jews put him on the cross. Nobody put Christ on the cross. Jesus put himself. Jesus allowed himself to be put on the cross. That the, and we, we went through the book of Revelation, that the tribulation is for the church. It's not for the church because the church is raptured. It's for the Jew. Yes, the Gentiles will take part of it. It's for the Jew. God doesn't hate the Jews. God loves the Jews just like he loves the Gentiles. But don't confuse this. You look at the prophetic truth of the Bible. Jesus Christ willingly submitted to God's plan of redemption to save us. Now, we believe that there is the truth, the foundation of our faith. We believe that it was prophetic. But folks, there also has to be salvation is really, you could say, transitional truth or a transformational truth. It says, for I delivered unto you, look back at, at 1 Corinthians 15 verse number 3, for I delivered unto you first of all that which what? I also received. I'm given to you what was given to me about salvation. I'm giving you God's word. Now, the statement reveals a, a transitional truth always associated with the gospel. You see, we have the reception. We received it. Paul shared what he had received. He publicly professed his belief in the gospel, revealing he had personally received it himself. How many of you ever see advertisements from these basketball stars or whoever stars. And, and look at, I have bought me a Prius electric car. I run it all the time thinking, that car is about as long as that piano. And you're seven foot four. You're not fitting in that. I drive what you drive. No, you don't. This is the thing for athletes. I'm thinking, no, you do not drink that stuff and eat that stuff. You, what you're saying is a complete lie. But they're trying to use a famous person to sell their product. What is that, uh, you know, that, uh, that glue or tape and all that stuff that you can put on an item, even underwater? What is that uh, flex tape, flex seal? How many have ever tried to put it on a hole underwater. It doesn't stick. I built a whole boat with just this. Do it. I'll watch you go out in the water. Wear a life jacket. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't stick to some things, okay? I mean, if they were able to, they would say, this held up the... Uh, the I'm sorry... A thought just came in my mind. and, and uh, Now, it could probably hold the boat that Biden would be in because that's the little boat that they use for an illustration. But if you were to have really a, a battleship, it is not going to seal a hole. But Paul says, I'm not giving you something that's not true. I'm not giving you something. I'm not just making a promotional speak. I'm not making an advertisement here. I am telling you what transformed my life. What made a difference in my life. I became a, I was a persecutor who became a preacher. 
I was a man who stood there and watched Stephen put to death. I held his clothes. I wrote letters. I carried it out. You see, the world does, yes, yes, we, we definitely need a leadership change in our nation. But we need Christ in our nation. We don't need Christ just in our nation. We need it around the world. The transformation here. Paul said, I received it. I need to give it. The reception of this. Once presented and understood, the gospel demands a response. Now, this response is always personal in nature. I cannot receive the gospel for you. I cannot stand before a holy God and say, Christ, you were a substitute for our sins. I want to be a substitute for this person's sins. That doesn't work. I look at little Adeline and, and, I, and I think that if you continue to grow and mature and God tarry his coming, there's going to come a point in time in your life that you have to receive Christ as your Savior or you'll die and go to a Christless hell. I can't be a substitute for her, although I would love to be if she weren't saved. You see, I personally received Christ as my Savior. June the 8th, 1994, I received Christ as my personal Savior. I'm secure in Christ, but my salvation through Him is non-transferable. As I received Christ by faith, my life was completely and eternally transformed. Why, the old man died and the new man came alive. That's Jesus Christ. But listen, when we receive the gospel, we need to give the gospel. We need to tell people about Jesus Christ. What do you tell them? You tell them exactly what was told you. You tell them exactly what you received. Each and every one of us have a different salvation story, but all of us have the same story in that God sent His Son to die on the cross for us to be our substitution. All of us trust the same thing. If you're saved. You see, we need to tell people, having received salvation, Paul said, I'm compelled to share it with you. He did not keep the good news to himself. He delivered the message of the gospel to all who would hear it. Paul was faithful to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, as believers being transformed by the power of God, we have an obligation to proclaim the good news. This is not optional. The Bible says in Matthew, it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. You say, oh, no, that was to the disciples. No, it says that we are to go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. You see, I've told you about me. You've watched me. This gospel message, take it out to them, teach them to receive it and to declare it. And so the gospel continues to go, what do you teach them what you have learned? You know, there's things that that you, you know. Sean, at our age, I'll throw myself into that. In our early, well, I guess we're not early 50s. We're mid 50. What color is that pen? Okay, his eyesight's bad. Purple. purple. How do you know it's purple? And not a trick question. How do you know it's purple? You were taught color. You were taught black. You were taught silver. You were taught your shirt has green and gray and and some black in it. Black shirts. gray, Gray jacket. A pink scarf with other colors. We are taught that and so... You were taught, and as a teacher, you take homeschooling. Miss Angie, you were taught colors, pink bow. You have received it, and now you are declaring it. 
Mommy, what is this color? It's pink. How do you know? That's what was taught to me. That was taught to my mother and my grandmother and my great-grandmother. That's educational. That's truth. This pen, as much as you might like to say it's blue, it's purple. It's a purple pen. Actually, it's red and blue. I understand that. To get purple, you have to mix the two colors, red and blue. The more blue you put, the more this, more red you have this, and you can get all that. But the fact is, is it's purple. What do you declare about the gospel? What you've been taught. What have you been taught? Well, we've been taught the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We've been taught that Jesus Christ is real. We've been taught that Jesus Christ is the very Son of God. It is expected of everyone who has received salvation in Christ. We must be willing to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Listen, we have a clear presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You ought to know the verses. I, when I was talking to a young lady here just a few days ago, I, I taught her, I talked to her about everything she already heard. But here's what God's Word teaches. But you know what? There was not one verse that I showed her that I wasn't showed myself. I was showed, I was showing a clear plan of salvation. You see, the gospel of Jesus Christ is foundational to our faith. He died for us. We ought to live for Him. But not just that, we ought to declare, we ought to tell people about Jesus Christ. Give them your salvation story. Listen, we are responsible for what we have heard. Too much is given, much is required. Folks, there are people hurting that need the truth of Jesus Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness. Lord, I pray that you will be with us. Lord, if someone here this morning does not know you as their personal Savior, if they've never received you as their personal Savior, I pray that today, today that they will give their heart and life to you, that they will not go on uh, today or any day without knowing you as their Savior. But Lord, if they are saved, I pray that they will declare what they've heard, not be embarrassed, 